Hello world, this is Craig. When I did the video on the monitor 80, and when I was talking about the command tables, one of the things that I just kind of brushed over was exactly how those values and the things from the argument tables work in order to make a command. If you looked at the video or you look at your assembly file, you'll notice there aren't enough commands to satisfy all of the available commands for the, the microprocessor. If we just look at the 8080, it's an 8-bit machine. So 2 to the 8th means there's 256 possible instructions for the 8080. I'm going to define a term and I'm going to say that 208 or so of, of those are child instructions. And, or you could call those a derivative instruction or a construction, a constructed instruction. But I'm just going to call them child instructions because they came from a parent. Okay, and I'll, we'll see what that means in a bit. And so there's also, so that's 208. Then there's about 38 that are unique. And there's about 10 that are hidden hidden or undocumented or instructions that nobody talks about that are there and they possibly do something but uh, you know you can't be guaranteed that they they do that say so what do I mean by a child instruction let's look at a particular instruction set let's look at the move instruction okay so let's say move a to B okay we'll move a B is uh, a valid instruction and that is seven eight hex or uh, uh, like 170 in octal. But what this instruction looks like, if you look at this in binary, all of the move instructions begin with a 0, 1. So uh, data bit 7 is a 0, and data bit 6 is a 1. All the move instructions begin with a 0, 1. And you remember I showed there was the argument table. We can create an argument table. Let me come back to that page right there. Let's create an argument table. Okay, so those are our eight options for our argument table. And let's say that 000 means it's a B register. That's the C, D, E, H, L, M, and A. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is with my move instruction, I'm going to start it with 0, 1, and then I'm going to have three bits that are for the destination register. And then I'm going to have three bits that are for the source register. Okay, so a move uh, A comma B, which means take whatever's in B and put it into A, we would have for the destination A, which is 1, 1, 1. And for the source, we would have B, which from our table is 0, 0, 0. So we break that up into hex. There's our 8, and there's our 7. Okay, so that's 7, 8, hex. That's where the move A, B instruction, what it looks like. And we can do that for all of the move instructions. So all of the move instructions will begin with 0, 1. They'll have three bits that are the destination register and three bits that are the source register. So in our table in the monitor, we don't have to have all, you know, uh, 8 times 8, 64. Well, there's actually, there'd be 8 times 8 is 64, but some of these don't make sense. So you wouldn't do a move AA, for example. That's an invalid instruction. So we have to subtract off 8. Okay, so there's the 56 move instructions. Okay, so that's what I mean. There's 56 child instructions that came from the one parent instruction, which was the move, which began with 0, 1. I'm going to keep that table for a little later because you can see we're going to have to modify that table, uh, I think, to make it make sense. Oh, before I leave that, there is one interesting thing. The move instructions are all 0, 1, and actually all of the 0, 1s are move instructions, except for one. The 0, 1, uh, what is it? It's 7, 6. Uh, 0x76 is the halt which is a 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So as you can see, that's just a move M, M. If we look at our table, a 1, 1, 0 is the memory. So move MM is just a halt instruction. 
I've played with this before and my assembler will not allow a move MM, but the monitor in the mill isn't that, that sophisticated. And so it will allow you to put the instruction in move MM and it treats that as a halt. In fact, if you put it in as a move MM, and then when you read back symbolic, it'll read this back as a halt. So that's just a little bit of trivia there. Someday you might be uh, useful. If you want to do something fun someday, do a truth tip table all the way uh, with all eight bits from you know zero zero all the way up to uh, FF for the the instructions, and then assign the instructions to that, or go through the table and look to see which instruction is which and where it fits into that truth table. And it's really kind of interesting to see how these uh, come together. Uh, it might make your family worry if you do that, but it's it's really an interesting project. Now the the move is unique in that it's the only one that has two sets of variables that we put in. So it had the 0, 1, and then it had the destination register and the source register. None of the other commands have that many variables. They've all either got uh, just, just three that you put in or two that you put in. So what are our possibilities for these? Uh, we can have uh, a fixed bit, uh, like the zero one in the move instructions or zero zero or a one one, but a, a fixed bit, something that has to be set for those three for those two. And then the next three can be a fixed bit. And the last three can be a, a fixed bit. So this is just a this will create a unique instruction for that fixed bit. You know, an example is uh, you know like a return. A return is one one zero zero one zero zero one. That's a return. So that's what I mean by fixed bits everywhere. Okay. Our next thing we can have a fixed bit for the first two, and then we can have a register, 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 and this would be like the move that we just did, which is a zero one, and then r r r r r r. Okay, and that's unique. The the move and the uh, the halt are unique in those, and in fact, this always has to be a zero one in that case. Okay, we can have fixed bits, and then we can have three more fixed bits, and a register, register, register. We could have two fixed bits, a register pair, register pair and then a fixed bit, and then fixed bit, fixed bit, fixed bit. We can have fixed bits, then we can have a number, 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 bit, 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 and this is unique to a reset, where we just take whatever the reset we have, so a reset 000 is gonna be a, a fixed bit, uh, in fact, it's going to be a 1-1, one, one. Uh, and then whatever reset it is, and then for a reset, these are going to be 1-1-1. One, one, one. Okay, so this is a new construction. I, I should have written that it just as 1-1, one, one, and 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 one, 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 and that's a reset. Okay, so that's a, a possibility. Uh, let's see, we can have a fixed bit, fixed bit, and then a CCC and a, then three more fixed bits, where the CCC equals a condition. I'll talk about what I mean by that one later. Okay, so these are our only options that we'll have these. We'll have uh, the two register pairs, I said, is unique to the move, and that's where they're, the first two fixed bits are zero, one. Okay, the move instruction was unique in that it had two sets of variables. So we had three there and three there, and that's unique to the move instruction. It's the only instruction that has that many that we plug in. All the other instructions either just have uh, three or even only two variables that are plugged in to make the individual child instructions. So let's look next at the, the one zero set of instructions where bit seven and bit six are one zero, and these are going to be our our adds, our subtracts, and our logics. 
let's look at what are our, what are our choices on this. So we could have you know one zero, and then we can have uh, our full truth table, a zero 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 one. Okay, and then we have our register values, RRR, where RRR is anything from our register uh, argument table. The 000 is our add. 001 is our add with carry. Subtract. Subtract with borrow. SBB. And then our 100 is and, and, and then exclusive or, and then we have our or, and then we have a compare. Okay, so where our RR is anything from these. So, for example, if we have an add B, that's going to be a 10 for those, and an add is going to be a 000, and B is going to be 000. So we can see that add B is going to be 80 hex. And we can do that with all of that set of instructions. Okay, so the moves were our 01s, zero so the 10s one are our add, subtracts, and all of our logics. Let's do the 11s one next. So the 11s one are going to be our condition, our conditional calls, returns, jumps, so forth. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So these are going to be 1-1, one, one, and then we're going to have condition, 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 and then our truth tables. Okay, so if we have a 1-1 one, one, and then whatever uh, condition from a table, then we'll look at our condition table a little later, but then this would be a uh, return. A conditional return. Uh, the zero one is going to be a pop. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The one zero is going to be a conditional jump. The one one uh, isn't used in this. One zero zero is going to be a conditional call. One zero one is a push. One one zero wasn't used, and the one 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 is the reset. Uh, and these are actually for the reset. These are N, 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 like I mentioned earlier. Okay. If we do that, then our condition table looks like this. Here's what our condition table looks like. All zeros would be a uh, not zero. That would be, if the condition is zero, that would be no carry. Carry. Parity odd. Parity even positive, and minus. Okay, so we can create a code. We can create the instruction from this. So we would take whatever our condition is, uh, for example, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 for our not 0, and then uh, conditional jump is a 0, 1, 0, and that will equal jump, if not 0. So those are our conditional calls, returns, jump, and then a few oddballs like the pops and the push and the reset. The pops and the push, since these are done with, with uh, register pairs, we have to modify this a little bit and say that 00, zero is going to be either B or, for some instructions, it's going to be the BC pair. Zero 01 is going to be D or the DE pair. That's going to be H or the HL pair. The 110 is going to be M, or in some cases, depending on the instruction, like the push and the pop, it's going to be the stack pointer, or it might be the program status word. The way we know if it's a stack pointer or the program status word is for the push and the pop, we have to look at this bit right here. Okay, so that's our conditional calls, returns, and jumps. We haven't done our 00s yet, so let's look at our 00s. Uh, these are zero, 00, register, 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 and then our truth table, zero, 00. If we have a 110, one, one, that's going to be a, an immediate. So 
move immediate is going to be a 110. This is going to be a decrement. And this is going to be an increment. The next one up to 011 can either be a extended increment or an extended decrement. And the way we know whether it's an increment or a decrement is by looking at the one before that. So because these are working on register pairs, we don't need to have three things here to define it. So we really only need to have a register pair, register pair. And then if it's a zero or a one, it tells us whether it's going to be an increment or a decrement. Is either the LDAX or it's the STAX, same thing. We have a register pair, register pair, and then either a zero or one to tell us which of those two it is. The next one up, the 001, that's either going to be a DAD or the uh, LXI, the extended uh, load immediate. Same thing, it's going to be register pair, register pair, and then either a zero or a one to tell us which of those two it is. So we kind of we could modify this a bit and say uh, if this is a zero zero, then it means the BC pair, or it's it's yeah. If this is zero zero. It could mean BC increment, or if it's that one, it could mean BC decrement. This could be the LDAX or the STAX, or it could be a DAD, or the LXI. So depending on if it's a 000, 001, it still means the BC pair in either case, but it's going to pick from these two instructions depending on which of those, uh, what, what that next bit is, that third bit in the, in the variable is. Then the 111 is for some oddball stuff. These are all of our rotates and our uh, accumulator adjust and our complements and our uh, uh, set the carry. Those, those all fit into that uh, 111. Okay, so I think I caught them all. Every instruction that isn't one of these is one of those original unique instructions I was talking about. So this, I think, if we ex completely expanded all of these, we would have 208 of these instructions that can be created uh, from scratch. And then there's 38 instructions that I didn't even mention, except for the no op and the halt, which are unique instructions. And then there's uh, 10 of the hidden instructions that just, they may or may not work, uh, depending on who made the microprocessor. All right, so this is a little bit into the weeds, maybe quite a bit into the weeds, but uh, it's interesting you know, to, to realize that these instructions don't, aren't just pulled out of thin air. They, are, they all mean something. They're all a combination of the individual bits that are then instructing the individual, transi the individual transistors in the microprocessor to do something. Okay, well, that's the video, and uh, I hope you found something interesting in it. But uh, enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.